somebody knows that you don't need a whole lot of help when you have access to the power of his name. It's Heavenly Father. I can't help myself. 
-hmm. And then a few months later, I had an accident where a lady hit me. But the blessing is, the God's God, and he still keep me. And like Reverend Johnny said, I'm still alive. Yeah. And when I think about what could have been, and he didn't allow it to happen, that's a blessing. When I think about what could have been, I didn't know how serious it was the injury I had internally. But the Lord knows all about it. Yeah. And he is still. Yeah. Mm. He is still keeping me. Mm. And I'm thankful to be alive. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. She said he anybody ever been in the accident and the car looked worse than you because he kept you. Come on, come on. My testimony is for a lot of you don't know, but in 2008 and still today, I blacked out of the church. Since then, I was diagnosed with heart disease. I have mitral valve issues. Mm. And I have an aneurysm that's been there since 2008 in my head. Since that day, continuously, I have TIA, what they call mini strokes. I have one Monday. I never know when they're going to come. My head spins, but thank God. Mm. Here we are, 2016. I haven't had a major stroke yet. Yeah. My neuro doctors don't understand. My heart doctors don't understand. Yeah. But God is good. Just yeah. Oh! Yeah! Praise Him! Praise Him! Praise Him!
that kind of thing. I have another problem, but they don't know what it is. But I am about to God that 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 would be delivered from me. Yes, come on. But Speak those things. I just, I just, I, I'm a boy, I'm a crazy. And it was for God to deliver me from, from the cancer. I took it out of the head. Thank you. Thank you. It's what for him. I'm aware of what I'm doing. I'm glad I'm here to touch tonight. I'm today. Thank you. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 We will keep you. I know there's at least one more person in here. Yeah, yeah. You want, us, you want us to stop. I see you. Yeah, yeah. I just thank God. Come on. And I make mistakes. He's brought me out.
that he has set the stage and set the atmosphere for a true understanding of what God has called us to hear on today. Amen. Yeah. And so I'm not going to reread what was read earlier today. We are coming out of the book of Genesis chapter 41. This entire scripture was read earlier uh, in our service. So I'm going to move right into the message. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. I think I will read, let me see, I think I will go ahead and hit just three verses. Genesis chapter 41, I'm just going to read verse 38 through 40, and we'll keep it moving, amen? amen. Once you find it, you can say amen. amen. You can say amen. If you don't, you can always look at the screen. It is on the screen. We'll be reading from the New International Version. All right, I still hear pages. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all can read along with me. The Bible says, So Pharaoh asked them, Can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. Verse 40. You shall be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. Thus ends the reading of the word by your heads even now. Father, we thank you today for the testimonies that have gone forward. Now, God, we praise your name in advance of what you're going to do in this place. We pray that you might open up the understanding so that your word might go forth boldly. And that these, your children, might hear your voice very clearly. Now, allow us to apply your word to our life so that we might be able to benefit and be fruitful for the building of your kingdom. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Someone shout, Amen. 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 All right. Uh, very swiftly today, we do have uh, several things going on as we do at Christ Missionary. So thank God we got a lot going on. Amen. Amen. Amen for our young folk after church today. But I want to talk, if I, if I had a uh, subject, it would be what to do while you wait. <clears throat> what to do while you wait. Amen? Yeah. If you have something to write on. Just remember, too, I believe we have some sheets out in the vestibule if you desire to uh, uh, take notes. Because we are still a teacher. Amen? Amen. Last week, last week, last week, if you weren't here last week, uh, you were not able to hear a message that we preached about prayer. Amen. We talked about Jonah. And in the teaching on last week, we talked about Jonah being in a place where many of us are right now. He was in a place called the belly of a whale, of a great fish. And in the belly of a great fish, he was in a very impossible situation. He was in a situation that most people, if they were in it, they would have died. Amen. 
Anybody know what it's like to be in a situation that if most people was in that same situation, they would have lost their mind. Amen. Amen. And so it takes something to be in a messed up, jacked up, confused, deranged situation and come out okay. Y'all do remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They was in one of those messed up situations. And what I like about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is that God did not just deliver them from their situation. He came into their mess and helped them get out of the mess. And so last week, we talked about Jonah being in a messed up situation. And we talked about what did he do while he was there. Chapter 2 of the book of Jonah says he prayed. And sure enough, did Jonah pray. But here's the problem. Some of y'all left last week and you said, okay, Pastor G, you just told us that when we find ourselves in an impossible situation, all we got to do is pray. And so what you did was you probably wrote down a list of things you needed to pray about. You left church and you started to pray. Praise God for you. I'm not going to tell you to stop. I'm going to keep on telling you to pray. Why? Because some of you walked in here today and you're upset. (laughs) You're mad at me because you prayed about your situation and it's still the same. You prayed about it and it has not changed. I love the scriptures that says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Y'all still mad at me. The bill ain't paid, Pastor G. I'm still sick, Pastor G. The pain is still there, Pastor G. My friend is still in the hospital, Pastor G. I prayed and ain't nothing to say. Here's the deal. We know what God promises. Do we not? Yeah. yeah. We know God's promise. We know the promise of God. The Bible says that there's over 5,400 promises of God. Yeah. You know, you heard them. God promised that he'll keep you. God promised he'll heal you. God promised he'll never leave you. God promised all this stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. He said he'll be, he'll be a friend to the friendless. He'll be a doctor. He'll be yeah. a doctor. He'll be a lawyer. He'll be all those things. And sure, God can be those things. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the problem. I can't teach you about the promises of God without also helping you to understand the timing of God. Uh It's okay to know God's promises, but if you misunderstand or you do not respect God's timing, you'll be upset with me if stuff don't show up when you think it should. And so today I want to help us understand what you're supposed to do when you you know God has promised that he's going to deliver you, but you're still trapped. God promised he's going to heal you, but you're still sick. God promised he's going to mend your broken heart, but you still feel broken. What am I supposed to do while I'm waiting? Do I have a witness? Uh-huh. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Because here's the deal. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want us to get it twisted. And for us to be frustrated when you are in a waiting season. And God wants to bless you, but he can't bless you. Because you're blocking your blessing. Because you're so focused on what you're frustrated about. And not the faith that God has given you. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because and here's the reason why I got to say that. I got to say that because some of y'all, the reason why y'all are frustrated and upset is not because you don't have what, what God promised. Uh-huh. Y'all don't want to hear this. You're, you're frustrated, you're mad, and you're, you're, you're twisted because, not because of what God hasn't given you that he promised. You're upset because you saw somebody else with it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, can I preach like I want to? What you're upset about and what frustrates you is because you done prayed and you done cried and you done paid and you done sat and you done cried and you done done it and you done got your education and you done got, you done got yourself together but you ain't got the job, you ain't got the promotion, you ain't got the house, you ain't got the home, you ain't had the child, you ain't got the marriage, you ain't got the relationship, you ain't got the bank account, you ain't got the zip code, you try to figure out what's wrong with me. That's what you're mad about. I want you frustrated about it. It's not because you don't have it. It's because your friend got it and you don't. (laughs) Play with me if you want to. But the real deal is, is that you cannot focus on what God has for you if you're spending too much time focusing on what God has done for somebody else. Do I have a witness? Stop focusing on other folk. They can't send you to heaven and they can't send you to hell. And so, and so here's the deal. I want us to get this and I'm almost done already. I told y'all I said I'm on. 
the question that you have to ask is, when I don't experience, experience the promises of God, what am I supposed to do while I wait? Yeah. Uh-huh. Here you go. Y'all ready? The Bible says in the life, during the life of Joseph, the Bible helps us to understand. And y'all do remember Joseph. Joseph was a son of Jacob. He was a favorite son of Jacob. Uh, and then Joseph was a dreamer. The Bible says Joseph was a dreamer. I'm just going back. Joseph was a dreamer. And because he was a dreamer, his dreams got him in a lot of trouble. He was an arrogant little kid. Uh, anybody know something about that? He was an arrogant little kid. But he was still a blessed, highly favored, anointed young man. Amen. Right? But he was an arrogant kid and he was loved by his father. And so his father gave him a coat, the Bible says, of many colors. And that coat of many colors made everything even worse. His brothers already envied him because he was anointed and appointed. But then when he gets this coat, then they, they hated the Bible says they hated him the more. Right? And so they wanted to get rid of him. So they plotted against Joseph. And one of the brothers says, Well, we're not gonna kill Joseph. Let's just sell him into slavery. All right. And so what they do is they trap him and he ends up in a pit. And while he's in the pit, his brothers see, uh, uh, see a chariot coming. And so they decide, well, let's sell it to whoever's passing in the chariot. And so Joseph ends up going from the pit being sold to the house of Potiphar. Y'all, am I in the Bible? Am I in the Bible? And so there's a whole lot that goes on in the, in the life of Joseph. One of the things we have to recognize in the life of Joseph, it helps us to understand that every day ain't going to be howdy howdy. All right. This, and in yeah. some lives, there's going to be some rain that falls. Yeah. And what I like about Joseph is Joseph is not an example of how, uh, example of how you always cause the problems that you face. Yeah. Sometimes you, you got problems not because of anything you've done. You got problems because God allowed it. Yeah. Oh, I just said something right there. Some of you, you're going through not because of anything you've done. You're going through because God just said you need to go through this. Some of you, you're bearing burdens and you're carrying weight. Not because of anything that you caused to happen to yourself. But I've told y'all before, there are times when God has a meeting with the enemy. And he asks the enemy, what you've been doing? And the enemy will say, I've been going to and fro in the earth trying to see who I can devour. And he says, have you considered my prophet Joe? Have you considered my prophet Sarah and Susie and Bobby? Have you considered them for over Christ missionary? Maybe they need to be. But you've got to hear the protection around Christ missionary God. He says, well, I tell you what. I'm going to remove my head of protection. And you can do anything to be for over Christ missionary but kill them. All right, God. So if you wonder why God is messing with you, he ain't messing with you just because he messes with you. He messes with you because he knows you can handle it. That's why you're going through what you're going through. That's why you're facing what you're facing. That's why you're carrying what you're carrying. Because God built you and designed you to be able to handle what you're facing. And so Joseph is an example of somebody who's facing a whole lot of stuff. Somebody who's going through a whole lot. And all this stuff that he's going through ain't got nothing to do with him. Joseph's just trying to be a little arrogant little boy. And his brothers just, is there anybody got some folk that hate you? Yeah. Now watch this, they don't even know you. <laughs> and they hate you. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. We had a guy walk into a church, a church in North Carolina, I think it was, walk into a church, killed a whole bunch of folk, didn't know them, but he hated them. Yeah. Do you not realize we ain't got time to be trying to fight each other? I don't have time to be fighting with y'all. I ain't got time to be all confused over who sits in what pew. I ain't got time to be concerned about who parking space and who. I ain't got time to be concerned about what you wear. Why? Because I got enough folk hating on me. I got skin folk that hate me. I got KKK that hate me. I got people outside this church that hate me. I ain't got time to fool with you. There are people that don't like you because guess what? Because they don't like you. That's right. And so Joseph had some folk in his life that didn't like him just because they just didn't like him. And so that's one of the things you got to learn in the life of Joseph. Joseph was dealing with stuff that Joseph did not cause to be in his own life. But in his situation, even though Joseph was just like many of y'all, he was blessed and he was highly favored. He was anointed. It didn't matter what. It didn't matter what you said to him. It didn't matter what you did to him. It didn't matter how whether he was in a pit. It didn't matter whether he was in a prison. He was still blessed. All right. And so when we ask the question, what do you do when you wait, while you wait? Here's what I want us to understand from the life of Joseph. Look at verse 15. It's one of the things I want us to get. The Bible says in verse 15, the Bible says in verse 15 that that, uh, after Joseph finds himself in prison and he's stuck in prison because of what has happened to him in part of his house, the Bible says, Pharaoh said to him, I had a dream and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you. That when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. 
You know, what's so interesting, here's the deal. I want us to get this, that, that some of us got to recognize that you got to know what your gift is. And not only do you need to know what your gift is, you got to keep using it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Probably, probably reason why some of y'all like uh, not want to say amen to that because you don't know what your gift is. Yeah. All right. If I ask some of y'all what your gift is, you say, well, I can wash this. is pretty good. I ask you what your gift is, you say, well, I like to eat. That ain't no spiritual gift. Let me go down the list because some of y'all don't know. Would you, let, let me go down the list. There's at, least, there's at least three scriptures where you can find your gift. Romans 12, write that down. Romans 12, you can, find your, you can find a list of gifts in Romans 12. You can also find your spiritual gifts in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And if you're looking for your spiritual gift, I'm still going to run through them because some of y'all need to know what gifts are, what they look like, what they sound like. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4 is the third place you can find some of your spiritual gifts. Where's Minister Nadine? Minister Nadine, where are you? Are you here? Minister Nadine? All right, she's got a, she's got a list right there. All right, here's what you got to do. You have to take an inventory. Somebody say inventory. inventory. I ain't going to mess nobody up. Ask nobody to ask your neighbor. Neighbor, what's your spiritual gift? I ain't going to do all that. But what I'm going to say is don't not use your spiritual gift. Do an assessment and know why people keep coming to you talking to you. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. they keep coming to me? Why yeah. keep talking to me? Why people keep telling me their business? Why, why, why? Because that's your gift. How come every time I go somewhere, I think I'm going to be gone for five minutes. I'll be at the store, I'll be at the store for 10 hours. Why? Because it's your gift. There's your gift in there somewhere. I always tell people, if you want to know your spiritual gift, pay attention to the way you lose track of time. Yeah. When you look, when you look at your life and you realize that there's some stuff that you do and you look up and you're like, oh man, where did the time go? Some of you, your spiritual gift is just talking. Because you talk all the time. You're on the phone talking. So you have to give an exhortation. You can encourage people. Let me go through this because y'all like looking at me like I'm crazy. Some of, y'all, you, some of y'all, you need to know whether or not you have the gift of exhortation. You can have the gift of giving. You can have the gift of leadership, of mercy, of prophecy, of service, of teaching. You have the gift of administration. You, have, you can have the apostolic gift. You can have the, the gift of discernment, of faith, of healings, of health, of knowledge, of miracles. Do y'all hear me? Somebody here got the gift of tongues. Somebody else has the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Others have the gift of wisdom, evangelism. Then there's a pastorship gift. Well, all of us in here have a gift. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. 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 Know what your gift is. And when you have your gift, use it. Yes, sir. All right. Well, why should I use a pastor's gift? Because if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Yeah. Anybody know what the Bible says about the talents? Jesus used a parable. He says, well, the man was about to go away. He says, well, before I go, he calls some of the services. I'm going to give you some talents. And then some of the men used their talents and they built their talents. He came back and they had, they had prospered with their talents. And this other man said, well, you only gave me. <laughs> you only gave me. I can only usher. You gave them to give. You know, I don't know why every time I go to the kids. Whenever I'm teaching the kids, they all, you know, they all mad and they want to get the class up with. But when she come in, they're all happy. Maybe you operating in the wrong gear. Maybe you shouldn't be an usher. If people stop coming to church because <laughs> of you, do y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just throwing some stuff out. So you got to, you, you when God blesses you with a gift. You got to use it. And Joseph had enough sense to know that if I have the gift of interpretate of interpreting dreams, if that is my gift, then I need to use my gift. Do I have a witness? Yeah. That's the first thing I want us to get today. You got to know what your gift is and you got to use your gift. If you don't know, see minutes in Amen. Amen. Y'all hear me? Know what your gift is. All right. Now, next. Second thing. I'm almost done again. I told you. Second. One. First thing I want you to do is to use your gift. The second thing is in verse 16. The Bible says in verse 16, Joseph says, I cannot do it. Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Oh, y'all didn't catch that one. All right. Here's the second thing once again. Don't acknowledge the gift without first acknowledging the giver. Yeah. Don't acknowledge the gift without... Just, you know what? Here's what I get. The reason why I think some people are messed up and some people aren't getting stuff done the way they want to get it done because they're literally blocking their own blessing. Yeah. Ain't that messed up? You're literally black. Why? How are you blocking your own blessing? Because you are worshiping the gift and not worshiping the giver. Yeah. You're trying to figure that out. Like, huh? Okay, watch this. 
uh, what would it be like if it was your birthday? You know, and, and you had a birthday party, and at your party, people came to your party, and all the gifts was for other folk. <laughs> Y'all catch that? Can you imagine it's your birthday party? You invite folk to come to your house and celebrate your birthday party. But when they come, the gifts are for everybody else. So y'all, y'all do realize that, that this today is like God's birthday party. And, and it's time out for us coming to God's birthday party. Giving everybody else and say, we worship in hats. And we worship in cars and we worship in money. We worship in seats. We worship in process. We worship in preachers. We worship in <laughs> positions. We worship in possessions. That's what we worship in. We worship in all this other stuff. And God says, hey, hey, hey. Y'all here because of me. Hello? And you wonder why things ain't going right in your life. The reason why things ain't going right because you're worshiping the wrong thing. Stop worshiping the gift and start worshiping the giver. Why? Because it's the giver that sustains. It's the giver that gives you the ability to have the gift that you have. It's the ability. It's the, it, it's, it's the giver. Yeah. It's not the gift. Stop worshiping the gift. Stop worshiping the house. It's just recognize that it doesn't matter whether or not you have a house or not. Sometimes somebody needs to know you can have a house and still not have a home. All right. All right, why you praying for that Mercedes? You praying for that Jaguar? Why don't you take care of the blessed hoopty that he gave you? You want that big old house in five bedrooms and all them bathrooms and all that stuff? You can't take, take care of the two bedroom apartment you in right now. Take care of what God gave you and then God might bless you with more. I'm just saying. But all he wants you to do is to worship the giver and not just the gift. And so Joseph says, you know what? I know what you want, but I ain't the one that's going to give it. It's God that has to give it. All right. So the second thing I need you to do, this is what you got to think about. While you wait, you got to make sure that you're also worshiping the giver and not just the gift while you wait. And here's the last thing that I'm done the third day. So okay, the first thing is you got to know your gift and you got to use it. The second thing I want you all to get is, is to make sure that you don't acknowledge the gift without first acknowledging the giver. All right. And now I'm going to slide all the way down to verse 38. Verse 38, the Bible says, so Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the spirit of God? I like this one because here's the third thing I want us to get. You've got to understand and why you're waiting on God. Joseph, you got to get this. Joseph was, was in prison for two years waiting for God to do something. This anointed and disappointed and this, this just blessed young man was stuck in prison for two years. Matter of fact, he had even told uh, a couple of guys, uh, uh, a cupbearer and this other dude, this other dude was in prison. He said, look, I'm going to interpret y'all's dreams, but when you get out, you got to remember me. You got to come get me. And what happened? They forgot about it. So he ends up, the Bible said, the Bible says he ends up stuck. He ends up stuck. In verse, uh, uh, chapter 41, verse 1, it says when two full years had passed, he's still stuck in prison for two more years. Why those folk done forgot about him? Anybody ever been forgot about some friends? Anybody ever been forgot about some folk? He was forgot for two years. And so after this, this two year period had passed by, he's still operating in this gift. He's still, he is still meditating on the Lord. And this is what I want you to get. While you're waiting, you have to keep your spirit in the right place. All right. Yeah. And here's the deal. If your spirit is messed up, your spirit is messed up because your mind is messed up. If your mind is messed up, your mind is messed up because of what you're meditating on. I know some of y'all think that meditation is this existential out of body thing, right? With the Ouija board and all these cards and all that kind of stuff. You think that meditation got something to do with your horoscope and all that. No, the Bible talks about meditation. Let me tell you what meditation is. Are y'all ready? Meditation is utterance and murmuring. What meditation is, is meditation is what you say to yourself and how you intimately think about stuff. Yeah. See, so if you have, sometimes y'all see me and y'all be seeing me and I'll be, I'll be just, just muttering some stuff. That's what murmuring, just muttering, I'm muttering, I'm muttering. You would be like, what you say? Nothing. <laughs> because I'm not talking to you. Yeah. I'm talking to myself. Yeah. See, some of y'all, it's, it's, not, it's not what you say to other people that can jack you up. It's what you say to yourself. See, the Bible helps us understand. Oh, Jesus, y'all not going to take me here. Y'all ready for this? Y'all not ready for this. The Bible helps us say, says, blessed is the man that walketh not. Watch this. Blessed is the man. So y'all don't get it twisted. Blessed is the woman or the man. Y'all with me? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Watch this. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, which he doth meditate day and night. He doesn't say which he does get mad about 
day and night. Which he is confused about. This is his meditate. Means utter, think about intimately, day and night. Why do we do that? Well, yeah. let's go back to the word. The word of God says the reason why you meditate on the word day and night is because it says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Not your fruit, not her fruit, not they fruit. Your fruit. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? All right. How do you get there? You get there by meditating on the law or meditating on the word of God or thinking about the word of God or talking to yourself about the word of God or repeating the word of God or having conversations with yourself about the word of God because when you do that, it gets down in your spirit and makes sure that your spirit is in the right place. So what is Pharaoh saying? All, all, all Potiphar is saying is, is that I need somebody over my land who has the right spirit and I can't find nobody whose spirit is as right as this man right here. And so here's what I want to say, and I'm done. Here's what I want to say. Some of us, the Bible says, the Bible says, and he shall be. Some of us, you need to walk out of here today with a shall be in your spirit. All right. Yeah, you don't need a should be. You don't need a could be. You don't need a would be. You need a shall be. Oh, man. This is rough. Y'all making it hard on me. Somebody, you need to know that if you find yourself in a messed up situation, the only way you're going to get out is that you need to change what you're saying to yourself. You do know that the person that you know the most, the person that you know the most, is the one you spend the most time with. Yeah. The person you know the most is the one that you see all the time when you wake up in the morning and look in the mirror. The person you know the most is yourself and you are the main person that can mess yourself up or you can, you can mess yourself up you can help yourself. Come the on. saying goes, I think it was Gerald Ford that made that saying. He says, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Yeah. It's all about you. It's all about what you think. And it's all about what you're meditating on. And so I'm done. I'm already done. I just want y'all to understand these things. That if you want to know what to do while you wait and you look at the life of Joseph, just know if you got a gift, you don't know what your gift is, come talk to us. Does that make a sense? Yeah. Come talk to us. Yeah. Don't walk around sitting on your gift because God will take it yeah. from you. And you'll have to watch somebody else be blessed by what God intended to bless you. Don't be mad. Yeah. Yeah. God says, the word of God says, to know your gift and to use it at all times. Yeah. Acknowledge the gift and the giver. And then what I want you to do is I want you to meditate on the word of God while you wait because that keeps your spirit in the right place. I'm done, but I just want to share this one thing with you. This one thing with you. I was, uh, when I was a kid, I was in the marching band. Anybody, ever, anybody in here been in the marching band? You got one, that's it. Wow, two, okay, good, three, four, all right, cool. Five, six, so seven. So y'all in the marching band, y'all know what I'm about to say. Y'all help me preach this. Tell me tell this story. Well, in the marching band, there's, there was three things you could be at least. You could be marching, at ease, or marking time. <laughs> now, I understood marching. And after a while, I understood at ease. Right? But I, for the life of me, I could not understand marking time. Because I'm expending energy, but I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? Some of us need to know that, that God has a plan for us. Yeah. And what he needs us to get is, is that, is that when he has you waiting, he don't want you killing time. He wants you marking time. Why does God want you marking time? I had to study what marking time meant to understand this. And what I found is, is that marking time is a military term. What it means is, is that even though we ain't moving, he still wants you to be ready. And so what God understands is that in order to stay ready, you got to stay busy even while you're waiting. And so I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're facing. You can't kill time. You just mark time. I know it feels like I'm wasting a lot of energy here, but I'm not. Why? Because if something go down, I'm ready. If something happens, I'm ready. If something come against me, I'm ready. If something, if something happens to me, I'm ready. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Somebody, you need to know that. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't kill time. Mark time. Don't kill time. 
more time. Put your hands together for God today. I'm just trying to help somebody who you're going to walk out of here and you're going to have a long list of stuff to pray for and to pray about you want God to do. While you're waiting, I'm trying to help you with what you need to be doing. Don't get frustrated. Don't throw in a towel. Don't give up, right? Because where you are is, is right where God wants you to be. You in the hospital, you in pain, you in heartache, you in shame. That's right where God wants you to be. Trust me, I just, I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. Do I have a witness? The doors of the church are open. Somebody say hallelujah in the place. I invite everyone in the building to stand to your feet. I believe that there's someone in here who today, you came in here and you're in the midst of waiting. We believe that today can be your day of salvation. It's time for you to know what to do while you wait. That don't mean to sit back and chill. That don't mean to give up. It means that you can still mark time while you're waiting. All right, all right, all right. The doors of the church are open. If you're here today, if you're here today, if you're here today and you've never been baptized, we invite you to come today because we believe that today can be your day of salvation. If you've never given your life to Christ, you've never gone down in a liquid grave, you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, today can be your day of salvation. Somebody in here knows that tomorrow is not promised. While we're praying for ourselves today, tomorrow somebody might need to pray for you. And so you need to get your life together today. My wife loves to go to great restaurants, but the problem is in order to get into great restaurants, we have to first make reservations. So today can be somebody's day to make reservations to make sure you get into the kingdom. And then if there's somebody in here today, you're here. And you've given your life to Christ, but you don't have a church home. That means you don't have a place where you're planted, where you're growing, and you're serving the word of God. We believe that this church is a great place for you. And so we invite you to become a member of this church, a member of this body of Christ, so that you can be planted, you can grow, and you can serve the word of God. As a song is sung, I invite somebody to come today. Is there one today? The doors of the church are open. Come on, come on. Is there one today? I need all my saints in the house to begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Somebody's life hangs in the balance. Somebody's life hangs in the balance in here today. If that is you today, we invite you to come. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I don't mind waiting. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Is that one today? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. Is that one today? Yeah. Is that one today? I need my saints to begin to pray. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Come on. I don't mind waiting. Is there one today? Come on, come on. Is there one today? I see you. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind Is there another in here today? I'm going to just stop and uh, I had an experience yesterday and I think it's applicable right now. First of all, James is good to see you. Praise God. James is here today. He gave his life to Christ a few weeks ago. And so it's good to see him and his, his baby girl. But I had an experience on yesterday that really troubled me. I really, I really troubled with the fact that I think there's so many folk that believe that this thing is a game. Well, this is not serious, what we're doing. Uh, and we're coming in and we're doing things and we're walking out the same way that we've come in. And let me tell you what that has done. That has helped our young people to make what we do in church irrelevant. I met a group of folk yesterday who, when they found out I was a pastor, I became irrelevant to them. Y'all don't know how that hurts because they call pastors when they get sick. 
They call pastors when things go wrong. They call pastors when they need counseling. But as long as ain't nothing wrong, we don't need you, pastor. Because people have been taught that this thing is a joke. And I hate to be, I hate to be so blunt, but that's what a lot of our young people are thinking. Why are we doing this? And then when I hear the testimonies that go forth, I understand why. But y'all got to start opening your mouths and not being judgmental, not being hypocritical, but helping people to understand that I was where you are right now at one time. There's some young folk, and not young folk alone. There's some people that are old and know better who have left the church and they ain't trying to come back. I said it in Bible study. The overwhelming majority of people who are leaving the church are leaving because of church people. And another overwhelming percentage say they come back if we would just ask them. Now here's what I need you to do. Stop making me do all the asking. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And here's what I want you to do. Grab hands to the people that are next to you. And I want you to look at the person on your right. And I want you to ask, well, look at the right or the left. And I want you to ask a neighbor, are you saved? Wait for an answer. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, are you saved? Wait for an answer. Now look back at that first neighbor and say, neighbor, do you have a church home that you go to consistently? Wait for an answer. Look back at that other neighbor and say, neighbor, do you have a church home that you go to on a regular basis? Wait for an answer. Now, if anybody next to you said no, to any one of those questions, look back at them and tell them, neighbor, I will walk with you. Put your hands together for God. Now, can I get somebody to lead somebody? Hallelujah. Thank you. Can I get somebody to walk with some folks? I am tired of y'all walking out the same way that you walked in. It's time to give your life to Christ. It's time to be connected. Praise be the name of the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody keep praying. Somebody keep, there we go. Come on, come on. That's what I'm talking about. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.